Uh, yes, please. Chris Lipper on the bus, small business owner coaching. We are at Vang and Nancy Delane is going to talk to us today or share with us her information on trade secrets. And we're looking forward to it. Go ahead, Nancy. Okay. I'm going to share my screen here real quick. And let's let's hope this works here. All right, we go over here and we go uh, the slideshow. We go presenter view. Okay, you should see a. a we do. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, so what is a trade secret? Well, a trade secret is an intellectual property right. Okay, it covers confidential information that can be sold or licensed. Now, what's the difference between a trade secret and a patent? Okay, a trade secret is a secret. It's kept It's kept by secret. If you spill the beans, the secret's gone, you're up the creek, okay? A patent is an exercise in disclosure. In order to get a patent, you have to disclose the best mode of making and using the invention as of the date you file. So trade secret and patent are kind of diametric opposite ways of protecting invention. And in order to qualify for a trade secret, as a trade secret, the information you're protecting has to be commercially viable, commercially valuable because it is a secret. It has to be known to only a limited number of, group, uh, of groups or persons. And it has to be subject to reasonable steps that the rightful owner takes to keep the secret, things like confidentiality agreements. Um, and it's unauthorized acquisition, use, disclosure, uh, in a manner that's contrary to honest commercial practices is co is considered to be unfair practice. Uh, and it's a violation of the trade secret protection. And um, we'll get into the, what that means a little bit later. <clears throat> so what does it protect? Any confidential information. You were asking me earlier, who's, who's eligible for a trade secret here? Anybody who has confidential business information. It has to give you a competitive edge and it has to not be known to other people. Those are the criteria, okay? Types of information that are protected are technical information. That's what most people think about when they think about trade secrets, but commercial information is also a there. Um, a combination of elements, which uh, by itself may be in the public, but the secret combination provides a competitive edge. The, the, uh, the uh, best example of that being the 11 herbs and spices. Nobody knows what those 11 herbs and spices are, except for the people at, uh, at the uh, at the um, Kentucky Fried uh, Chicken offices of of um, of a Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, financial information is very often kept a trade secret. Uh, things like formulas, everybody knows the formula for Coca Cola is the most famous of all the world's trade secrets these days. Okay, recipes, source code, etc. Just about anything that gives you that competitive edge that is not known to others can be a trade secret. <clears throat> Okay, and protection may be based on specific statutory provisions. Uh, every state has trade secret laws. The feds have trade secret laws. Um, every country has trade secret laws. Um, or it can be protected by, uh, by case law that has to do with uh, the protection of confidential information. Or it can be protected by some kind of a combo like we do in the United States. Um, Examples of uh, violation of trade secret protection are things like espionage, industrial or commercial. Uh, breach of contract can be a, a violation of trade secret. Uh, breach of confidence can be a violation of trade secret. Now the owner of a trade secret cannot prevent others from using the information if they, if, if, if that other person acquired or developed it independently through their own research and development, through their own reverse engineering, through their own market analysis, chemical analysis, whatever. In other words, if they got if they came by it honestly, you can't prevent them from using it. Um, and because a trade secret is a secret, we don't get into things like prior art like we do with a patent. So uh, if if um, Pepsi suddenly, quite honestly, invents the formula for Coca Cola. Pepsi can patent that and not be not be um, subject to Coke's Coke's having invented it 120 years ago because Coke, because Coke kept it secret so it's not it's not it doesn't go into the prior art. To protect your state secrets, you mark the information as confidential. Okay, you tell people this is a secret. 
You have non-disclosure agreements and non-competition agreements in place with employees, with business partners, with vendors, strategic allies, all those people. And you get those things signed with employees as part of your onboarding process. You don't wait until the employee is ready to leave. Okay. And if you really want to be serious about it, signing that NDA and NCA is a prerequisite to employment. You can, you can say, you know, if somebody refuses to sign, you can say, okay, goodbye. We'll find somebody else. Thanks knowing you. Um, that's a, that, that is a perfectly legitimate thing to do. Um, you provide a, rebu a robust security infrastructure. You lock the thing in a vault. You have, you have good, you, you hire Dave quick and you get the, you get the, um, you get the uh, the firewalls put in place, and you get the the IT. You know, you get you get all of that stuff that the IT people do that I that Dave knows way better than I do. Okay, um, you control access to this stuff, both physically and technologically, uh, to all the documents that disclose the trade secret or any part thereof. Um, if you go into a Coca Cola factory, you will find that that factory has its own little part of the of the Coca Cola formula. Okay, it does not have the entire formula, but it has its own little part, um, and it doesn't know the order in which it in which it goes into the into the formula. So it's it's uh, you know it, it's 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 well it's well protected. Also, everybody who who has access to any part of that formula has signed an NDA with Coke. Uh, if they disclose it, then they're subject to all kinds of problems. Um, and those pro uh, those problems are found in the Defend Trade Secret Acts of 2016, which amended the uh, Economic Espionage Act, um, and they that that gives uh, that gives your employer civil penalties against you. In other words, they can sue you and get your money, um, and get you and get an injunction against you to get you to shut up. Um, they also involve uh, some criminal penalties that we find in uh, in the U.S. Code Chapter 90, which is, uh, you know, that, that that's kind of heavy duty stuff. Um, <laughs> criminal penalties involve both fines and jail time. Um, anybody know what the most famous trade secret of all time is? Nope. Sure you do. I've already I talked about it. I would have said Coca-Cola. There you go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. It's the most famous trade. But what's the oldest trade secret? AFC? Nope. Hold Think on. Way older. Let way us guess. older. Hold on. Uh, is it a pharmaceutical? Is it a medicine? Nope. Uh, is it clothing? No. Is it cooking? Something in cooking? No. All right, what is it? What is it? Okay, what it is, if you go back and you look at the you, you look at ancient Roman architecture, and those are the you you see the you see the arches, and they're not really arches, they're flat, they're flat arches. Right. How they built those and how they made them stay up between the columns, that's that was a big trade secret back then. It was huge. Everybody wanted to know that, and nobody knew. All right. So that so was it was the, it was the aliens, huh? <laughs> yeah, they they uh, they they uh, they got to, they got to the aliens. Okay. Um, okay. Any questions? I have one. Hold on, I gotta get you out of gallery view. So, how do you file a trade secret? You don't. You keep the secret. But what makes it a trade secret? It's being commercially be it being a commercial value because it is a secret and being not known to the general public. Okay, but so somehow somebody finds out, how do I state that, well, I made it a straight, uh, a trade secret on February 1st? Uh, you have the you have the documentation of this secret, okay? You, you've written your secret down and you've marked all these documents as confidential and you've dated these documents and uh, your employee, you, you know, the, the people who have, who have access to your version of the secret have signed have signed non-disclosure agreements and non-competition agreements with you. So that's it, huh? That's it. All that's right. It. Steve, go ahead. So you were mentioning about like Coca-Cola. And again, I'm one of those curious guys who likes to know how things are put together, et cetera, et cetera. 
So you're saying is that each factory or each plant or each something, somebody else has a piece of the puzzle and then they don't know the order and everybody else knows something else. So eventually you had to manufacture this product. So is there like somebody watching it? It's like some super high executive comes in and puts in the three drops of X, Y, Z, and somebody else puts in five drops of, you know, it's manufactured all over the freaking world. How? It is manufactured all over the freaking world. And they keep the, they keep the secret by not have, by, by, by schlepping the stuff between factories. You know, they, they literally do not allow one factory to do the entire job. Yeah, so the, the bottler gets sent the syrup and they're just adding the soda water, let's say. But the syrup manufacturer, maybe there's two or three that are adding different parts. And I can tell you that Coca-Cola, I think there's seven people in the world that know the formula and they're not allowed to travel together. Is that right, Nancy? Am I saying uh, these? Yeah, things? That, that's uh, that's uh, that's right. People, the, I don't know how many of the pe how many people there are in the world, um, but they are they are certainly not allowed. There are very few, and they are certainly not allowed to travel together. So when somebody, I mean, if the, obviously the formula has been around about 120 years, and I'm going to assume at this stage of the game that the originator ain't around, so he had to tell somebody. So do we? Oh, he wrote it down. It, 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 the formula is there sitting in Coca-Cola's vault. And the originator what, what sold it. What these seven people actually know is not the formula itself, but the combination to the vault. Hmm. And the originator sold it very early in the game. The logo and everything. He he was a, a morphine addict and was trying to, it was a, a pharmaceutical experiment. Yeah, the Coca and Coca-Cola is short for cocaine, just so you know. There's a whole piece on it on the History Channel. It's fascinating. Yeah, Coca, Coke was, Coke has a good story. Any other questions out there? Anybody think they want to do a trade secret or feel that they're eligible or they might wish they had? Can't tell you it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Nancy, just to review, so the bottom line, it's one of those STFU things. It's like, just don't talk about it. If you want That's it to right. be a secret, STFU. keep it a secret. Like I, like I tell my clients all the time, answer the question, answer the question fully, completely, truthfully, and then STFU. All right. It's, uh... all right, interesting. So the confidentiality agreement is the next step beyond the NDA. Confidentiality, yeah, you, you need both of them. You need both of them because, because when your employees leave your company, they carry with them the trade secret. Okay. They, they, they carry their part of the trades. You know, if they know the whole trade secret, they carry the entire trade secret. If they know part of it, they carry their part. Um, and you don't need that, that, uh, that, um, you don't need that getting, getting, um, you know, go, going into your, into their next employer's repertoire. Okay, yeah, so, I, so so the employee, the, it, it's important to have both both of those agreements in place and get them in place as the employee comes into the company, not as the employee leaves the company. Um, because, you know, sometimes when employees leave companies, they're a little on the disgruntled side and they're not willing to do an awful lot to help you, you the employer out. So get it, as, get it while everybody's happy. I always tell people it's like fingers on a hand. The pinky doesn't always need to know what the thumb is doing, right? Just right. let them do their own thing and do it well. Mm -hmm. All right, last chance. Any other questions, comments? I wish I have a question. Yep. So, Nancy, how long, how many years uh, for that confidential, that that agreement? Yeah, the comment, the, the non disclosure agreement? The not, yeah, or, yes. The confidentiality. It, sh it should last. The non-disclosure should last forever until, you know, that should last for the life of the employee. Uh, you can't prevent if, you know, say you're hiring an engineer and the engineer, you know, his, his entire, his entire life, his entire education is going into developing your trade secret. And then he leaves. Okay. You cannot prevent that engineer from making a living. 
but you can say to him, okay, you cannot talk about this trade secret. You cannot use the information you gleaned from this trade secret for usually the term is two years. Okay. Um, okay. There, Even in New York, the courts will enforce two years. Um, or but, ge geographical distance as well. It could be two years, yeah, 25 miles. Yeah, geographical distance counts as well. Uh, you know, for, for something like the formula for Coca-Cola, geography doesn't count. But you know, if you're if you're talking about if you're talking about a um a trade secret that's a contract between you and some vendor that's local that's local to you, um, then you know ge geography can come into it. Um, and and if the uh, if the employee goes into competition with your business, you know, say say you know, and I know you don't do this, but say you are a uh, a lighting designer. And your employee is, you know, one of your best lighting, one of your best chandelier developers. Uh, you can say in your in your non -dis in your confidentiality non disclosure agreement that you can oh you can you can go you know yeah you can make a living but you can't do it within a fifty miles of my of my store. Right. Okay. okay so that's where the that's where you can also put in five to seven years. And five to seven years, no court is going to enforce. Okay. That's good. To okay, know. two two years is pretty much the maximum that courts will enforce because the five to seven years you are preventing people from making a living. Oh, okay. okay. And you can't do that. That that's that's just unconscionable. Okay. Thank and that's you. where the pandemic came into place for a lot of people because those were an easy couple of years, right? For uh -huh. some industries to wait out a non compete. But yeah. Just saying. All right, very good. Nancy, thank you. Thank you for the the series that you have done for us on well, what do we do? Franchising, trademarking, licensing, trade secrets. Have uh, we done licensing? Well, yeah, we talked about that a little bit with all right, maybe we'll save that one. I don't know. But all right, we're good for the next few weeks. Thank you. I'm gonna stop the recording.